Episode 2 of Bufuri had Maple demolishing over 2,000 players with overpowered abilities and had Sally gaining her equipment. There were a lot of skills and a few equipment skills that were not covered in the anime along with some character stuff, but I gotcha, we're gonna cover them here. Thanks for watching and here we go. Starting in the first scene of the anime when Maple is in the forest, right at the beginning she gains Great Shield Mastery for Evasion and Parry. Firstly, Great Shield Mastery, she gained this from blocking an unknown amount of enemy attacks. What we know is that it took her hours to get it to level 4. Great Shield Mastery 4 reduces damage taken by 4%, and you can imagine the previous Great Shield Masteries took it down by the appropriate percentage. Evasion and Parry both reduce damage taken by 1% as well, and it seems to stack with Great Shield Mastery. Great Shield Mastery also seems to have a secondary effect as the narrator said that the skill allowed Maple to move more smoothly than before. Next up is the Savage skill. The skill increases vitality by 1 each time Maple takes an attack on purpose. It has a day long duration for that boost and it caps out at plus 25 bonus to vitality. She got the skill by intentionally receiving attacks from an opponent that she could have defeated and then taking those attacks continuously for a certain amount of time and not getting the death penalty while she was working on getting the skill. So pretty much this worked out for Maple's style of play. Next up, we see Maple using the Paralyzing Shout on the bugs. Quick reminder, Paralyzing Shout was a skill that she got from the Poison Dragon that she infused into her weapon. Extra reminder, Paralyzing Shout was part of the Hydra skill package. On that note, I want to give you another reminder. At the start of Episode 2, Maple said she was going to place Devour in her shield skill slot. The skill slots, for those who weren't aware, follow these rules. In exchange for the player skill, the skill can be infused into the weapon. Skills that are infused by this cannot be acquired again. The skill that is infused can be used 5 times a day without MP consumption. Subsequent use will consume MP that is required normally. Slots will be released every 15 levels. Maple, however, with Devour, was clever. She identified that Devour was a passive and cheated the system. Since Devour is always on, it didn't fall under the skill slot's 5 times a day rule. On that note, Devour's effects are a skill that changes everything that was devoured to power. Will Devour even magic and can change it to the user's MP. When the magic power overflows, it will be stored inside the body as a magic crystal. And we can see that reality reflected in the shield. Its requirements are oral ingestion of a certain amount of lethal substances. Bomb Eater, the other skill that she gained at this point, reduces the explosive damage type by 50 and are unlocked by beating an explosion ladybug with HP drain, i.e. eating an explosive ladybug. The next skill I want to point you to is the skill that Maple wanted a new shield in order to be able to get, Great Defense. She heard about this skill through her own research. Now for episode 2, she doesn't receive this skill, but it's still good to know that she was researching it on her own. From here we jump onto the Sally side of things and man, there is a lot. First, let's understand some things about Sally. The anime alluded to this when Sally was talking about being a good swimmer translating to VR, but the narrator explained that even inside the game, moving a lot will make the brain tired and will dull movement. But this affects individuals differently. Depending on how good an individual's brain is, differences between reaction and stamina will have effects on player skills. This was used to justify why Sally could run so quickly when she was carrying Maple. The narrator also added that Maple had removed her armor so that Sally would be able to carry her. You don't get this scene in the anime since Maple started the scene in her beginner outfit as opposed to the light novel and the manga where she started the scene with armor and purposely removed it throughout the scene. Anyway, back to this, moving on to the fishing, the skill requires 20 decks. That's why Maple can never get it. Uh, next up, all right, let's be thankful that the manga exists and go through. Here are Sally's skills. Slash, Knockdown, Fireball, Sand Cutter, Affliction 2, Hand to Hand 1, MP Regeneration Up, Small, Way of the Short Sword 2, Double Rush, Power Attack, Water Ball, Dark Ball, Strength Up, MP Up, Poison Resistance, Way of Magic 2, Gale Cut, Switch Out, Wind Cutter, Refresh, Attack Up Small, Magic Point Usage Cut Small, Gathering Speed Up Small, Fire Magic 1, Water Magic 1, Wind Magic 1, Earth Magic 1, Dark Magic 1, Dark Magic 1, Light Magic 1, Hide Presence 2, Sense Presence 2, Soft Footed Leap 1, Fishing, Swimming X, Diving X, Cooking. Wow, this girl got busy. She got all these skills during times when Maple wasn't around, so essentially during that montage in Episode 2. Moving on, we're going into the gear and skills that she got from the boss fight. So here Here's the names for all her gear. We got Marble Muffler, Oceanic Garments, Dagger of the Depths. You can see it on screen. Thank God for the manga. 
the two skills that came with the gear being Mirage and Oceana, and thankfully we also have the description there. By this point in the anime, we've already seen Mirage used, but upon activation, it confuses the target's sense of vision so that it sees the user's reflection in a different area. Effective against everyone other than the caster, can be used a maximum of 10 times per day, lasts for 5 seconds. If an attack connects with the reflection, the effect of Mirage is cancelled. Then we have Oceana, creates a shallow pool of water in a 10 meter radius around the caster which decreases agility by 20% when touched by monsters or other players, cannot be used mid air. The caster is immune to its effects, can be used a maximum of 3 times per day and it lasts for 10 seconds. To follow that up, she also got a few skills from fighting that giant boss monster, one of them being jacks of all trade, master of none. Sally makes the point that with this particular skill, if she had gotten it before the boss fight, she could have ended up dying. What it does is that it reduces the damage that Sally can deal by 30% and then it gives her some other bonuses in other areas. Next up, Sally also got giant slayer, the same one that Maple has but Sally decided to discard it because she didn't want such an unreliable skill. Now that was the power stuff. Turns out there's a few more changes in the episode that I want to go through. For one, a few of Lisa's scenes don't really happen in the novel. For instance, Kaede and Lisa talking about the reward for the event didn't happen. That was Maple on her own finding out about the event. What the anime did was that they took the content that Maple gave readers by talking out loud and reintegrated it into Sally's proper introduction in the episode. And I think the manga also did this in a few spots. Anyway, the Maple in the light novel and to some degree the manga seem a little bit more competent than the Maple in the anime, mostly because the Maple in the light novel was much more aware of what was going on in the game. Being able to use the bulletin board to figure out skills and hunt for skills and knowing about the events and expansion ahead of time, knowing about the current meta, and knowing about player habits. In fact, Maple was in the bug force specifically because she was hunting for skills to make up the difference between her and the higher level player. Going specifically to that forest because she knew that players don't like going there. The logic being that if there's no players there, she can take all the monsters in the area and hunt for skills without letting her agility get in her way. That wasn't just a random move from her, that was really smart. You do get the note that implied that Maple was hunting for skills right at the beginning of episode 2, but you wouldn't really know how far this went with Maple. Here's another cool difference. Maple started fishing on her own, Sally only came in the second day. Again, speaking to how much Maple was doing on her own. Another difference, the second floor or the second level of content was already open before Sally got her gear. You had the chat room talking about the second level while Maple and Sally were fishing and this makes sense. Maple knew about the expansion coming thanks to the bulletin board ahead of Sally arriving in the game. One last thing, Maple left Sally alone to fight the boss in the light novel and the manga. None of this timer business during the boss fight. The anime probably changed it around just to make it feel more friendly and uh, maybe drum up the tension. Okay, so those were the differences and here's my final little analysis on those differences. One of the big takeaways that I had in this episode was that the manga is really good when it comes to giving you the information. Another more interesting takeaway was how easy it was to make Maple seem like a little bit more of a new player in the anime. And allow me to explain. The anime set up Lisa as the teacher, the one to guide poor Maple. The best scene that exemplifies this is the final one where Lisa explains to Maple what the level 2 of content was. This is in direct contrast to original Maple who knew about the changes ahead of time and was already planning for those changes. In trying to make Sally seem like more of a teacher, they took a little bit away from Maple who was legitimately interested in the game enough to be using online resources to stay up to date with the news. That said, I don't want to say that the anime is trying to ruin Maple because I don't think that was the case. I think this is just a little bit of a side effect from increasing Sally's screen time, which is factually true. There is more Sally in the anime than in the original materials. What you ultimately had here was an interesting little balancing act. And because Sally and Maple interact with each other, if you try and give more to Sally, you're going to take a little bit away from Maple. But because Maple is so competent within the novel, there was no real way of creating a situation where Maple would truly be a newbie for Sally to teach. And that awkwardness is present in the inn scene. In the inn, after telling Maple about her build, she goes on to tell Maple that she won't be able to acquire skills that require Maple to get hit, to which Maple agrees, and tells us that she was already trying to mitigate that. And here is where that nuance is, or here is where that little bit of awkwardness is. Sally is the one that premises the problem, telling the viewer about it, and this in turn associates her again more with the role of the teacher at the very least. But Maple reveals that she is already working on it, which follows the pattern of what the anime did with Maple. 
It downplays her activities, not removing her competence, but making it a little harder to notice by removing little bits of info. And that's really the thing that I want you guys to focus on. We're looking at the difference in impressions. And for me, when I think about it, I do think that the ordering of the events did alter my impression of Maple a little bit when it came to the anime. But that might just be me, or I might just be overthinking it, who knows. Anyway, while we're on the note of Maple and her competence and it not being played up in the anime, uh, when we got the flashback to Iz, that scene was altered. In the light novel, Iz gave Maple a choice between two materials. And again, that made Maple seem like she was more savvy, since Maple specifically made the choice to go after the fish based on the knowledge that she couldn't reach the other materials, which again, it creates that stronger impression of Maple's knowledge and creates a stronger impression that Maple knows what she's doing within the game as opposed to the anime where Maple is just told where to go. Inherently, one scene has more agency for Maple than the other and I appreciate that. So that's it, episode 2. My final takeaways for this episode, the anime wanted to give Sally a stronger presence and the anime also didn't care too much about the powers compared to the manga. So what do you guys think? Which of these differences are you most interested in? Let me know down below and if you enjoyed the video please leave a like or a comment or share the video out if you want to share this trivia with other people. Anyway everyone, thank you so much for watching and until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.